you know, games have to change for great players. I'm a great player, so they got to change the game. That's right. Bottom line, I'm still a champ. But I'm, I'm here to prove and show you that it takes more than that if you're going to be in this league. you got to be great all the time. I'm great all the time. I'm a champ. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the nicest way to say this. Uh, I smell blood. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come after somebody. Uh, who's next, man? Just bring them, line them up. I'll start knocking them down. Why not? down the line here that's Ken Knapsack I am Ken Knapsack you champ are. good to be here uh, I uh, I don't know what to expect of this one other than we do have two two heavy hitters we have a story is what we have because you look at Drew McQueenie when he came into this league everyone uh, already when he came in they anointed him maybe as the new king he ran up against Jeff Snyder co-holder of the championship and Jeff Snyder took the win Jeff Snyder then he and I played I, I was fortunate enough to beat Jeff Snyder at the collision um, and then when we get to the actual tournament itself mm -hmm. Drew McWeeny once again making a name for himself and making it strong him and Sam Levine win three rounds they are in the they are in the finals against team action we're gonna see that match soon but now we got the singles tournament and now Drew McWeeny wants to prove himself once again he is a quiet three and one yeah that uh, quiet because that that loss was shocking to a lot of people. Right. So, it's, so it's easy to think even to Snyder. Even to Snyder, it's 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 easy to say, oh, maybe he struggled. He hasn't struggled. One bad bad match does not a struggle make. He is he's a, he's a dangerous weapon out there. I can tell you, he he about ended my career. He's he he knocked the smile right off my face. He, I'm sure he did. And the other thing is that you know you have uh, the Lions, Dan. You got JTE, who last year we can say. Was it was a it was a terrible year for JTE. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't say that about 2017 with JTE. You, Correct. You have to almost give him comeback player of the year. I mean, you look at what he has done. He beat you in singles. He beat William Bibiani in the first match this season by, by TKO, mm -hmm. and he barely lost to Clark Wolf. Him and Jeff Snyder have defended those team titles four times this year. Um, I mean, they they are the do most dominating team champions we have ever seen. Absolutely. JT, you're right. He might not just be the comeback player of the Schmodown. He might be the comeback player of America. I mean, that year, he was on a losing streak. It, 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 I saw him just as a friend in the pit of despair. Now to see where he is. I still don't agree where it's taken his ego, but it, he's up in that stratosphere for a reason. That's true. The Lions then have been doing a lot of things, and there's been a lot of talk, and we're going to hear it right now. Drew McWeeny. Is that who you're playing? Yeah, that's what I'm playing. Uh, listen. I'm not. I'm gonna be honest here. I grew up reading this guy. Like he's been. He's a legend. He kind of founded this whole internet. <laughs> geekdom he was in writing. Stand By Me. <laughs> was he in Stand By I Me? Think, I think he was. Oh uh, yeah, he was uh, Jerry O'Connell. I got it. You know, when I started competing in the singles uh, league, I just didn't really have a feel for the game yet. Now I'm enjoying the game. I'm really having a good time. And what I'm excited about is going up against JTE because when we win the finals, and we're going to win the finals. Uh, JTE is part of the team that we're going to have to eventually face for that belt. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So today is kind of a preview. But here's the thing. Everyone says he's the best. Everyone says he's the next big thing. And do you see a pattern here? Every time somebody is pronounced the new king of Schmobile. Yeah, the YouTube the clowns do it. Harloff yeah. does it. What happens? Do, 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 do. Who's the first person they usually have to fight to actually make a name for themselves? You this guy there's a lot of trash talk that goes on and i understand the the need and the necessity for it and you know i all i'm going to say is so far we've had three matches in the team tournament and two of those teams have disbanded afterwards i think it's pretty clear that we don't just beat our opponents we mangle our opponents i really feel like i have a chance to win the belt and i'm here to prove it i'm sorry bibiani william the beast bibiani i made him william snooze the beaten fest. bibiani <laughs> he's a snooze fest the godfather i don't know what he's gonna be he's gonna be an old man's home or something he's gonna be in a wheelchair he's gonna be retired the Patriots have been what the champs for a year 
that's not an accident. Uh, that's not somebody that you uh, that you just treat like you're going to go right through them. I have no uh, no prediction other than we're both going to play really, really hard. I got to say, lately, <laughs> something feels a little uneven. Uh, I've been champion the tag team for almost a year now. I think it's time to mm -hmm. put on a little shoulder pad right here. I know who's got that. Oh, yeah, who's got that? That imbecile. Oh, the commish? The fake commish. <laughs> he spells commish with a one M, the guy. Let me tell you something. Uh, commish, hold on to that belt as long as you can, because I would love to take it from you. And if we fight each other, <laughs> I'm taking it. Oh, no doubt about it. Guy's got no shot. What is going on everyone? Frank here from The Rundown giving you your pregame analysis for today's matchup. JTE enters this match winning two of his last three and is answering 62% of his questions correct, while Drew McWeeny with a 3-1 record is answering 74% of his questions correct. Drew's recent showing in the team tournament should give JTE a real cause for concern as he answered 89% of his questions correct during that run. Now, in order for JTE to have a chance at a win today, it's very important he keeps the score close in the first round. If he can do that, JTE has a real opportunity to put some pressure on Drew in the second round as long as he can stay away from going a multiple choice too many times. Drew, on the other hand, if given the opportunity to steal, has a very successful history of doing so. He has stolen five of his six opportunities thus far in his career. But this match should come down to the five pointer for both players. JTE is just one for four on five pointers, and Drew has only been tested once with that kind of question and came up short in his only match against Snyder. Whoever succeeds here should take home the win. That's going to do it for the pre match breakdown. And remember, for more stats and info on your favorite players and teams, go follow at SD Rundown Stats on Twitter for more. It doesn't surprise me. JT showing no respect to the Godfather at all. He's the arrogance is what has carried through him uh, th this season. It's why he's yep. doing what he's doing. And you yep. got Drew McQueenie who's just saying, "I'm not taking JT for granted. I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to." He's not letting because the comments. Everyone, he, it's. I think that if you voted today, Drew McQueenie is the MVP of right. the Ultimate Schmodown teams right now. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, he's the only player in history to do two back-to-back -back first round. Perfect rounds plus the bonus. No yeah. one's ever done that. Um, and he's coming in. He's coming in with some fire. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and fire, he, you see him just walk out there calm and stealthy, and that's scary in its own way. It's a different kind of fire. What I will say is that the winner of this match will play Jeff Snyder. Now, that's interesting yeah. all in itself because if McQueenie wins, then McQueenie gets a chance to redeem that loss. Yeah. If JTE wins, we have the reigning team champions going head-to-head -head in the second round. So either way, it's going to be pretty low. I, I, I don't want to root for anybody. You know, you know I, I, the, the, the the lion's dad sometimes got in my craw, but JT versus Snyder, I don't, that would be like two magnets you couldn't push together. I know, there. it would cause a rift. Who knows? All right, Ken, uh, give me the tail of the tape. All right, with JT, his uh, strengths include action adventure movies, Arnie and Sly, and Making Me Work Late on Fridays, Drew McWeenie, uh, 70s, Oscars, classics, and whatever he damn well wants to be an expert in. Yeah, it was brilliant. I like it. All right, you ready to go? I'm ready. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the ultimate showdown singles tournament. Introducing first, representing the Lions Den, with a record of five wins, six defeats. He is the 2015. Ultimate Schmodown finalist, the 2016 Team Player of the Year, and the reigning Movie Trivia Schmodown Team Champion, Little Evil JT. Look at JT milking it up. He loves it. Uh, they, they love those belts. Lions down again. Uh, missing, the, missing the queen of the jungle. I don't know what's going on no, there. But, a couple. It's weird. Um, 
Where's she been? I don't know. Off uh, scouting talent or something. JTE. Yeah. I almost love it. Counting days to that belt gone, you clown. Hey, you listen, your face is stupid. You know that? You've got a stupid hey, face. Yeah, you got the belt up there. Yeah, what, how many matches have you won in your entire career? That doesn't make that doesn't make any difference. It does. I get cheated left and right. You are the definition. Come January, that you, belt's going to be mine. You are the definition of an imbecile. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Of course. Spell imbecile. You, D -A yeah. D-A-G-N-I-N-O. Get the fuck out of here. All right, here we go. So I hate that guy. All right, so. Hey, guys, something else, man. Am now, I underdog here? Why what? am I coming out first? Am I underdog? What's your, what's what, your what? record? I just wanted to. What's your record? Pretty damn good. No, what's your singles record? Uh, it's, I, I plead the fifth. Yeah, okay. Unbelievable. Undefeated this year, thank you. You know this what? Is, I, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them in so long. I yeah. saw Steiner for the first time the, like, yeah. the other day because yeah. they've been quiet because they, they're just waiting for either action or uh, above yeah. the line. So they're just sitting here now. That I forgot how much they're despicable these people are. Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. And his opponent. Representing above the line with a record of three wins, one defeat, and one knockout. He is the 2017 Ultimate Schmodown finalist, The Godfather, Drew McQueenie! Look at that. Godfather out. Look at Snyder taunting with the axe. And Drew is just staring him down, not okay. worried about it. Okay. Snyder trying to do a little intimidation factor, looking at the guy that he's beat before. Oh, and Drew. Oh, All right. handshake. Okay. Wow, I haven't seen JT give a handshake yeah. in years. I, I didn't know he knew how to do that. Wow. A, I think that's, that's a form that's, of civility. That's how intimidating the Godfather is. He puts yeah, his yeah. hand out. You better shake him. That's right. Um, all right, so here we go, guys. Round number one works like this. The competitors are going to get eight questions worth one point apiece. You're going to show your whiteboard to the camera and say it at the same time time 15 seconds to answer the question all right godfather are you ready i am little evil you ready let's do it well, let's get ready to schmoda <laughs> all right round number one category number one dramas dramas who plays mr brown in reservoir dogs mm. brown mr brown yeah. See, that's the thing. You don't count JTE out. He's, he's been done. I never do. Yeah. I, I, you know, I tried hard to defeat him once in battle, and he, he's, he's better he did than kill me. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Drew. I have Michael Madsen. That's incorrect. JTE. JTE. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Correct. Right. That's right. JTE All right. strikes All right. first. JTE won nothing here. That's won nothing. Now, that is the first time Drew McQueenie has missed in the first round yeah. in quite a while. Quite a while. All right, here we go. Still early. Second question category is comedies. Comedies. Who played George Henderson in the family comedy Harry and the Hendersons? Now, a lot of groans from People the crowd, groan. you know, yeah. until one of them gets it wrong. That's true. I mean, that's true. Yeah, all, all, everybody in the audience is 55 years old. So. That's true. Five, four, three, two, one. Evil. John Lithgow. Correct. Drew. John Lithgow. There you That's go. Good. Two, one. Two, one. All right. You can feel it in the crowd. Next category is the category of sports, sports movies. Who plays quarterback Jonathan Mox Moxon in Varsity Blues? More reaction from the crowd. Yeah. People, uh, a lot of groaning. A lot of groaning yeah. in the crowd. The first round, people are yeah. feeling each other out. people groaning. No one wants to write the no. question. So, Five, you know? four, three, two, one. One and Drew. Uh, that would be James Vanderbeek. That's, That's correct. correct. JT. James Vanderbeek. Yeah. All right, there you JT. Go. JT. Yeah. It's All okay. Right. All right, guys. Question four is in the category of horror thriller. In the Friday the 13th film series, what is the nickname given to Camp Crystal Lake? All right, we see a. There's some groans, but yeah, it's all from Riley. I, Mark Riley's yeah. acting, uh, acting the fool out there. You guys realize I right. literally just wrote a book on Friday. Four. <laughs> Jesus. Don't tell people that. Three, two, one. Oh, pens God. down. I have no idea. JTE. Camp Death. I have no idea. It's incorrect. Oh, Drew. Uh, that would be Camp Blood. That's right, correct. Drew, Drew, Drew ties it up. Drew ties it up. If you're going to guess, if you're going to guess, JT, that's JT's a good guess. a good guess. guess. That's a good guess. All right. You just wrote a book on it? Damn it. Next question. Category of action adventure. Where do Mr. Miyagi and Daniel travel to in Karate Kid Part 2? Yes. 
Oh, the <laughs> forgotten part two. There. Forgotten part uh, two. Yeah. Where do they go? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. JT, pens down. And JT, you go. I'm not quite. Sh it's Tokyo, but it's called Ikanagua. No. No? No. <laughs> True. Wait, did you need the province or just. Yeah. I just put Japan or. Japan's okay. okay. Japan's okay. Oh. Okinawa. Okinawa, Japan. So why would it not be? What did he say? He didn't say Japan. He didn't say Japan. What did he say? Okay. Yeah. He didn't, didn't, he didn't go to Tokyo. He went to Okinawa. But he didn't. He said Japan. <laughs> so I could have gone more continental. <laughs> what? Are you. Are you. Are you. Are you challenging it? Are you? Cha I, I, hey, hey. Are you challenge? Sorry, Tom or JT? Are you challenging it? I'm gonna Shh. challenge it because you didn't ask for a specific town. I just gave you somewhere. He put a whole continent. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. The challenge is up. We are we are coming back. We are coming back. JT challenged it, and because there's just too much in, we are striking the question entirely. Mm. We're just okay, taking a point back. Striking it, striking it entirely. That seems uh, fair. We're just striking. That's fair. That seems fair. Drew yeah, says hey, it's fair. That's I have fair. no problem with that. Because re re fair. reset the scoreboard to three three, please. Three three. Reset the scoreboard. Three three, three, three. Resetting it, and then we are now going to. All right, Drew. Yeah. Drew's fine with it. We're yeah, okay with I it. Think yeah. That's fair. All right, here we go. In the category of action adventure, guys. Okay. In John Wick 2, who played Cassian, Gianna's chief bodyguard? In John Wick 2, who played Cassian, Gian Gianna's chief bodyguard? There is the question there. I haven't seen that one. It's good. I've seen Karate like Kid it. Part 2, though. I know. That didn't go over too well. Didn't go over. No, no. Five, four, three, two, one. One pens down, JTE. Not sure if I remember her name, Ruby Rose? That's incorrect, Damn true. That would be common. That's correct. All right, so Drew right. McQueenie oh, the gets the point back, the chief oh, bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. so I, I thought of the wrong bodyguard. Right, you so did. So Drew got yeah. it back. You did. <laughs> I thought you of the wrong bodyguard. So, all right, here we go, next question. All right. Other guys. All right, question six, category animated. What Oscar-nominated animated film features the voice talents of Charlize Theron, Matthew McConaughey, and Ralph Fiennes? Or Rafe finds. Rafe. I know it's. I, I know it's Rafe. People. I still know don't understand Rafe. how you get Rafe with an L. Rafe. I don't know. I shop it. I understand I that. That's how Rafe. it's pronounced. I just don't understand how you justify that. I don't either. Five. Can you read four. the question? Yes. Repeat the question. Uh, what Oscar-nominated animated film features the voice talents of Charlize Theron, Matthew McConaughey, and Rafe finds? Five. Yeah. Four. Three. Yeah. No. Two. One pens down, Drew, and nothing? No. Kubo and the Three Strings? Ooh, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. No. That's incorrect. No. It's incorrect. The, qu the It is Kubo and the Two the strings. strings. Three strings. He had three strings. Wow. He just I mean. Wow. Well, everyone, I just want you to know I knew the answer. I was off a <laughs> number. <laughs> wow. So wow. JTE missing. Okay. You know, and the craziest part, if he would have just said Kubo, then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Kubo and the oh, three strings. Two or three. Is, Kubo and the three strings is the sequel That's that has not sequel. come out That's yet. That's a totally different concert. Wow. Right. What a match so far. Question number seven. All right. Here we go. Fa fantasy sci-fi. Name the sci-fi thriller starring Bradley Cooper who takes a drug which allows him to utilize his brain and improve his lifestyle. You ever seen Kubo in the Nine Strings? You know, I, I have not seen that. Right. Two, three, or four strings. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Drew. Uh, limitless. That is correct. correct. JT. Limitless. There That's you go. Correct. Five, four, Five, one, four. one. JT had a couple opportunities here to tie it up and just had that little mess up with the <laughs> Kubo and the 75 strings. All right. all right, all right, guys. Uh, final question category is directors. Directors, these are the people who direct the movies you watch. Who directed the two movies? Analyze this and analyze that. Hit him with a baseball bat. Boom. You ever hear that song? Uh, could no, you don't I'm do sorry, that I'm sorry. anymore. Five, four, three, two, one. Drew. Uh, Harold Ramis. Correct. Correct. JTE. Harold Ramis. There That's you go. Correct. All right. Close. Six five. Good fight here. Good fight Damn here. Damn you, Kubo, and your two strings. <laughs> we get into round <laughs> number two. So it'd be very Sorry. crazy if it's one point by the end of this match. But we get to round number two, and the contestants will spin 
spin the wheel. They're going to spin the wheel, and if it lands on opponent's choice, you got to stay on whatever your opponent chooses for you. However, if it lands on a category you do not like, you can spin again. Each question worth two points apiece. You can go to multiple choice, then it's worth one point. You get four questions, 15 seconds to answer. Do not forget about the JTE rule and the challenge rule. Drew has used one of the repeats, and we are ready to go here. So, Drew, you are up by a point. Would you like to go first or second? Second. You're going to go second. All right. JT so JTE the... is going to go first here. All right, JT, give it a good spin. Good spin. All right. Spin is in. Good spin. Crowd apparently That's a good like spin. It. That's, That's a good spin. spin. I don't know the problem. Oh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. So close. Almost sports Tom movies. Tom Cruise movies. Yeah, it's Tom Cruise. Uh, I'm going to take Tom Cruise. He's going to take it. All right. Here you go. Tom Cruise movies, JTE. Tom Cruise. All right. Could be a mixed bag here. Let's see. All right. Here we go. All right. JTE, question number one. Okay. In the 1990 movie Days of Thunder, who plays the doctor whom Cole Trickle has a romance? Nicole Kidman. That's correct. Two All points. Right. In The Color of Money is a sequel of sorts to what earlier film? The Hustler. That's correct. Two points. More points. All right. right. Mm -hmm. Number three. In Rock of Ages, who plays Sherry Christian, a young woman from Oklahoma who comes to L.A. with dreams of becoming a singer? And that's a question about Tom Cruise. Okay, let's see. Tom Cruise movie. Um, He's in the film. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I know who it is. I'm trying to remember her name. Uh, this should be fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. In Rock of Ages, who plays Sherry Christian, a young woman from Oklahoma who comes to L.A. with dreams of becoming a singer? Five, four, Three. Multiple choice. I can't remember her name. A, Julianne Huff. B, Brittany Snow. C A, Julianne Huff. That is correct. Julianne Huff is correct. All One right. point. All right. Final question, JTE. Who plays Stefan's girlfriend, Lisa, Lisa Letsky, in All the Right Moves? Leah Thompson. Two points. Ooh, nice by JTE. Nice pull. JTE pulls seven points in that round. That's a big round for JTE. All right. Drew McQueenie, Drew McQueenie, you are up. Give it a good spin, please. There it is. Good spin. I like the rotation on that one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. 80s. 80s. Wow, that's he. He is the master of that. Wheel. I'll take it. <laughs> no, of course you will. Eighties, <laughs> eighties all over again. All right. Appropriate. Yeah, that's right. Okay, four questions. In this category, what is the license plate number on the Ghostbusters car? Uh, Ecto-1. Two correct. points. Two points. All right. Before losing his job, Michael Keaton is an engineer with what company in Mr. Mom? Uh, multiple choice. All right. A, IBM. B, Ford. C, Exxon. D, Boeing. Five, four, three. I'm going to go with A. Two. Incorrect. Okay. Can you repeat the, the answers? The, the answers? A, IBM, B, Ford, C, Exxon, D, Boeing. Five. Let's say D. Incorrect. Looking for Ford. Dance. The answer was four. Right wow. I'll do the quote if you want. All right. Uh, okay, guys, listen up closely. What Arnold movie features the line, Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. Commando. Two That's points. Correct. Two points. Oh, my God. That was easy. All right. To Final tie the question. Game. Final question in this category, Drew. What coming of age movie is set in the fictional town of Castle Rock, Oregon? Uh, well, that would be Stand By Me. That is correct. Tie game. Tie game. Tie game. All right. So look at this. It is a tie game going into the third round. Third round, neck and neck. JTE, the reigning team champion against. Drew McQueenie, who is going to be one of the, the top contenders here in the team division. And we are going to round number three. Round number three works like this. The contenders will take three numbers from 1 to 20. First one is going to be worth two. Second one is three. Third one is worth five points. Drew, you are the higher ranked competitor. Please pick three numbers from 1 to 20. 12, 2, and 9. 12, 2, and 9. JTE. 6, 11, 
19. 6, 11, and 19. All right, JTE will be up first to try to send it back to yeah. Drew. He chose category number six. JTE, your category is movie taglines. Movie <sighs> taglines. All right, here we go. JTE, what 1999 movie had the following tagline? Reality is a thing of the past. Matrix. Two points for JTE. Alex. All right, now we go. Now we go to Drew. All right, Drew, your two-point question. You chose the number twelve. That is two thousands movies. Movies in the two okay. thousands. Two-point question. Who won the Best Actress Oscar at the two thousand seven Academy Awards for her lead role in The Queen? Uh, Helen Mirren. That's correct. Two, two points. points. Back to JTE. Two there, right? ba back to JTE. JTE, you chose category eleven. Chose category 11, JT. That's classics. <sighs> classics. Who directed the Peter O'Toole epic, Lawrence of Arabia? Oh, hold on, hold on. David Lean? Three points for Three. JTE. Oh, well oh, done, JTE. Wow, wow JTE. Okay, so back to... Drew now. To Drew. I, if I forgot that, I would have walked off the stage. Your three-point question, Drew. You chose the number two. That category is action adventure. Action adventure. What hip-hop legend plays cameraman Danny Rich in the 1997 action thriller Anaconda? Uh, Ice Cube. That's correct. All Three right. points. All right, JTE. JTE to get it. I see you, Sam. Here I we go, JTE. You. All right, JTE. So it. JT has his five point in order to send it back to Drew and get 22 points in order to try to get Drew to tie it up. Here we go. JTE fantasy sci-fi. Other than Optimus Prime, name two of the Autobots that appeared in Michael Bay's 2007 Transformers film. Okay, 2007. First one was, was Dark Moon, I think. Um, five. Hold on, hold on. Four. Three. Repeat the question. Other than Optimus Prime, name two of the Autobots that appeared in Michael Bay's 2007 Transformers film. Uh, Bumblebee and would you say it had to be Optimus Prime's team or can it be a Decepticon also? Yeah. Do you want me to repeat the question, last one? Last Five. one, please. Other than Optimus Prime, name two of the Autobots that appeared in Michael Bay's 2007 Transformers film. Okay. Five. Four. Three. Bumblebee. Two. And um, Jax. Incorrect. Correct. Looking for either Bumblebee, Ratchet, Jazz, or Ironhide. Ah, I so now. Is that Dark of the Moon? Now we come down. First one was 2007? Oh, yeah. shit. All right, Drew. Tie game here to win the game. You chose the number nine. The category is dramas. Dramas. Five point question. The final question in Slumdog Millionaire is about the characters in what book? I'm going to have to go multiple choice. No multiple, no multiple choice. choice. There isn't. Not in this. Five, four, three. I don't have it. Two, one. So we're going to sudden death. <laughs> sudden death. Yes! Three, three musketeers. Three musketeers. Three musketeers. Three musketeers. Yeah. We're going to sudden oh. death. So sudden death works like this. They will get the whiteboards. They're gonna get whiteboards, so the first person to miss will lose the game. Yeah. All right, so, sudden death. Drew, are you aware of how the, the rules work? You clear on the rules? Uh, we, we answer questions until somebody misses. Correct, JTE, you know how it yeah, works? Yeah. Okay, here, before. here we go. So, it can go fast or it can go forever if you don't miss. Here we go. Here we go, sudden first question. Death. You will not know the category. Here goes the question. What actress played Rabbit's mom Stephanie in 2002's Eight Mile. I'm sorry, in which film? 2002's Eight Mile. Oh. He's got it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Drew. Uh, Kim Basinger. JTE. Kim Basinger. All right, it's one high. more. Here we go. One more. 18, 18. Okay, next question. Who won an Oscar for their performance in the 2006 film Dreamgirls? Uh, Christian, I have a stomachache. This yeah. is so tense. I know. Five, four, <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one. JTE. Jennifer Hudson. Drew. Jennifer Hudson. Correct. Yeah. All right. Next one. All right, here we go. Hold on. Next question. 
who played the young astronomer Leo Biederman, who co-discovered the comet heading towards the Earth in deep impact. Five. Can we get repeats on these? No, you used them all. Four, three, two, one. JTE. Elijah Wood. Drew. Elijah Wood. Both correct. Yeah. <laughs> all right. There we go. Next question. Next question. Here we go. All right. In Insomnia, cops Will Dormer and Hap Eckert are visiting detective from what city's police department? What city? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens total, down. Is, Drew? Is a total guess. I don't have it. JT? New York? Incorrect on both. Correct. Los Still Angeles. Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. It, was LA, it was New York or LA. Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. All right. Wow. Shows the wrong one. All right. So, who plays Thulsa Doom in the original Conan the Barbarian? The crowd has moved. It's no, I know. It's five. The original Conan the Barbarian? Four, three, <laughs> two, worse, one. Drew. James Earl Jones. JTE. James Earl Jones. That's, oh, no! That's correct. Correct. All right, here we go. Here we go. Keep going. 21 21. <laughs> Six sudden death questions. All right, here we go. In Apollo 13, which actor played the role of astronaut Jack Swigger, who replaced astronaut Ken Mattingly, played by Gary Sinise, at the last minute? Five, no hesitation five, there, Chris. They're both riding. Four, three, Two, right. one, pens down, JTE. Kevin Bacon. Drew. I have Bill Paxton. Oh! And your winner, Little Little What a victory by JTE! That was a battle for the ages. Uh, that that may have been one of the best matches ever, I've ever seen. Ever, ever 22, seen. 22, 21. JTE wins it in sudden death. For anybody who is questioning the sudden death rules now, quiet wow. your mouth because that was one of the best examples of sudden death in knowledge. Different categories all over the board. Drew knew it. JTE knew it. Drew knew it. JTE knew, knew it. And then just that one name. Little Evil got it, and now you're going to have a showdown between the team champions in round number two. It sucks for the crew of Collider because it means we'll be here till 3 in the morning. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what can you say about the match you didn't say, Christian? I, I think that was the best match I've witnessed. It was one of the best matches I've ever seen. And again, JTE is making his claim not only as Comeback Player of the Year, he's making a stake right now at Player of the Year. He is crushing it. He is now six and six. He is six and six, and he just beat Drew McQueenie, and he beat Bibiani. We're going to see a battle of the champions, and, Jay, and uh, Emma Fife is going to have a lot to talk about here with both Little Evil and The Godfather. Yeah, we're going to allow Emma to sit here and interview us today. Oh, wow. Because Thank we're you. really jubilant. I'm okay? so honored we uh, what happened to drew mcweeney would he eat the peach and fall over in the garden over uh, there nope but i'm pretty sure that drew mcweeney fought a very very good match that came down to a single point at the very end there in sudden death but i do have to say jte despite the fact that evil is in your name and you are the absolute incarnation of it look, congratulations on your win today you know marlon brando had to die and uh, michael corleone's here to take over the whole tournament i respect drew and for anyone out there who watched this match, now you have to respect me. I took out Bibiani, who was supposed 100%. to be the next coming. I took out the Godfather, who was supposed to be the next next coming. Well, guys, the big dog is already here. I am going to run this tournament. I'm going to get that title. I'm going to be the first to have all the titles. We're married to this. Everybody else is still engaged. Right, but you do understand, JTE, that in order to get said title or all the titles you do have to go through uh one jeff snyder 
Next. Listen, we, we knew this day was coming. Okay? Yeah, I, mean, I knew you, that JT was going to win this match because I beat McWeeny. <laughs> JT <laughs> can beat McWeeny, yeah. and that's exactly what happened. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to stand here and shit talk my man. Of course. You know, whatever happens when we end up playing, the Lions End is advancing, we'll which, both is, go which out is great. To, we'll go out together as a team. Wow. That's, uh, and we're going to sit there. They're going to announce one team. We'll go there, and we're, we're going to sit, and we're going to have a great time. We'll have all the Lions End with us, and whoever wins, wins. If I win, I go on. If Jeff wins, I'll shake his hand, wish him all the luck. we He's the only guy I actually think has a chance of beating me. Uh, all these guys that you built up to be the best of the best, the new guys are going to just tear through the league. They have to come through JTE. Little evil. Yeah. And I'm tearing them down. Wow. Wall by wall. Listen, there's the, I'm seeing a, a level of uh, respect and class that's very out of character for the lion's den. Give me this mic. The fans are way out of control on Facebook, okay? McWeenie this, McWeenie that. that. It's all about the lion's den. Our reign isn't over, okay? You saw what JT did. This match should have been over long before overtime. If he had just gotten Kubo on the two strings, we wouldn't even be talking about what a great match it was. JT would have dominated. So, you guys, uh, what do you think about Team Above the Line? They're, uh, they're a pretty strong crew I coming think, out there. <laughs> I think I just knocked them under the line. I mean, <laughs> what is, above the line? Try to get above me before you get above the line. Yeah, McQueen, I, I knocked him down. McQueenie couldn't beat either one of us. Yeah, I lost to Sam Levine, but I'm ready to avenge that oh. one. But really, I mean, I want a shot at Team Action, so... Team action. That's you where really, we really want to go. You really want to. We face really want to face them. Action. I mean, I understand because yep. they are like posers. They're clearly trying to be you guys, but That's don't clean. you think above the line would be like a, a, a better match of, of skill and talent? Look, 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 look. I already beat them. <laughs> Why do I? I want to play. I want to beat new people. So bring team action. A team because they love action movies. I've seen some of their past rounds. They've missed some layup action questions. I'll take. I can take both of them on my own. Just let's have an all action category. I see. Those two okay. versus me, and I'll still wipe the floor. So with what you're still saying is you're afraid to face above the line, and team action is the safer choice. Afraid? No. What? Talk this nonsense. L listen, Tom. Talk this. <laughs> losers doubt winners. Winners don't care about losers. Until somebody can take these belts from us, everybody else is a loser. And they've been. And then one of these guys are going to take that belt off that sham Harloff, and we're going to see what happens. And all the belts will be here. Plus, I've already stated I have the biggest thing that's going to happen in this showdown very shortly. And it's going to surprise everybody. So we will see. I'm afraid to see what this surprise is that you have in mind here. There comes the bias from Emma Fife. All that nonsense, you okay, know. You know, Boys, like, taking belts. let's take our belts out. Yeah, let's get out of here. Okay. All right, fantastic. Okay, great, awesome. Congratulations, JTE, on your win. We'll be right back with Drew McQueenie. And we are back with Drew, the Godfather, McQueenie. You know, I can hardly even say it was a loss today because. It literally came down to one point at the very end. Well, you know that was, that's the way this this game. When you're when you're playing at this level in the tournament, you know that's what you expect is you're going to have to fight for every single thing you you do or don't win. Absolutely, and and again, it, it comes down to luck, and I I don't even know that there was any luck involved. I feel like everything more or less went in the favor of both of you, and. In the end, Kevin Bacon. Who yeah, knew? That's and that's one of those films. There's so many people in that movie, it's and so many true. names to keep straight. It's hey man, that's a it's a good win. It's a good pull. It was, and again, it was it was an easy mistake on your part, and I don't think anybody watching or you yourself could possibly be disappointed in your performance today. It was a good match. Good and, match. You know, you're you're still in there, man. You're still in the team tournament with your partner Sam Levine, crushing it, and you know. There's a possibility if you guys come out on top of that that you might be facing both JTE and Jeff Snyder at some point. Does that give you extra motivation to try and take down the Patriots? 100%. Um, <laughs> at this point, I feel like Sam and I have a moral obligation to not only steamroll team action, but to take the belts from from the Patriots. You know what? I feel like team action are the wannabe Patriots, and, uh, you know, nobody's... Nobody plays heels like the Patriots do, and I think that you guys definitely could be the heroes that the Schmodown needs. I think they lit the fire today, and uh, we'll see what happens. What are your thoughts on JTE moving forward in the singles? Would you like to see him thrive? Uh, I Look, mean, he's facing Jeff Snyder, so it's kind of I, a lose-lose situation. I think this next match, I think what's going to be great is um, the two of them playing each other. 
they're going to reveal a lot of their weaknesses. And so that match, we're going to be watching very, very closely. Ah, you're right. You'll get an opportunity to study for your inevitable future schmodown against the Patriots. Exactly. Well, Drew McWeeney, again, just one of the best competitors we have here in the league. Thank I you, mean, Adam. I think that match has the possibility to be match of the year, frankly. And, you know, you were certainly a large part of it. That was so much fun. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And right. I, I hope you guys win the team tournament because it's not over for you, Drew McQueenie. And now back to you, Ken and Christian. Wow. You know, uh, I have to say, I mean, that was that was something uh, crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, you both even they both realize it, too. Yeah. Normally, JT, JT was confident, obviously, in that in that interview. But even he had to give respect to to Drew and Drew gave a lot of respect to JT and it was awesome to see the face off kind of yeah. between Snyder and JT how they're we're going to see the champs. It's like demolition in the Royal yeah, Rumble. That's right. The right? second Royal Rumble. Yeah. That's right. Good reference. Yeah. Good pull. We're both 70. I know it's true. But what did you think of the match? And was that insane? I, I, it's got to be one of the best I, of all time. I, I say that's the best match I've ever witnessed. I, I do think. To forget the point scores. A lot of people focus on point scores. I get that. But seven sudden death questions. It's insane. It's insane. I mean, that was something else. Uh, look, you say what you want about Little Evil. That was a battle well yeah. fought. He deserved it. Um, and we're going to see. We're going to see people who are saying, you know, that, that Snyder carries JTE. Ooh, we'll decide it We're now. We're going to find out. We're going to find out in round number two here. It's JTE versus Snyder. Woo, what wow. a battle. All right, guys, thank you for watching. What would you think? Who's going to win between the Battle of the Patriots? Is it going to be JTE? Is it going to be Snyder? And what is Finstock or Dagnino? What's he going to do? Who's going to walk out with who? What's going to happen? Will the Lions Den explode in round number two? We're going to find out. For Ken Napsock, I'm Christian Harloff. Okay, Schmodown fans, here we go with your post-match wrap-up. JTE, he comes away with a big win by giving his best performance since his 2014 tournament win over Mark Ellis by answering 73% in this match. Now, this match also marked the third time in the Collider era that JTE went 4 for 4 in the second round, which proved to be very vital. However, in the third round, his 5-point woes continued as he was unable to correctly answer, making it 4 straight misses, and that dates all the way back to his match with Josh Makuga. JTE's 22 points for this match is the 9th best point total of all time, which also happens to propel him to number 6 on the list of most career points with 140. Now as for Drew McQueen, his lack of experience answering 5 point questions came back to bite him as he had the chance to win the game on a final question. He is now 0 for 2 in 5 point questions. Drew's accuracy rate of 71% this match is tied for the second worst performance he has given in singles play. In other match notes, the combined 43 points makes this the 5th highest scoring match of all time. And another note, this was the second time in Schmodown Singles history a match went to sudden death. The first time was Mark Ellis against none other than Little Evil himself, JTE. And now before I get out of here, here's a quick fantasy tip for all you fantasy players out there. With all the hype surrounding Jim Davida and his singles debut, this may be a good time to make a two for one deal and shore up your roster. It remains unclear how active Jim Vavita will be in the singles league. But now would be a good time to sell Vavita before he even plays a single match. And if you want more breakdowns and analysis, be sure to check out the Schmodown Rundown podcast every Saturday on the SK Plus YouTube channel, as well as on the Schmoes No podcast feed on iTunes. That is it for me. I'm Frank Janish, and this has been your Schmodown post-match wrap-up.